Hey, I'm Alex Rackler from Board Game Co, and this is a Should You Back Zombicide White Death. We're going to be diving into Kamal's latest Zombicide campaign, Zombicide White Death, currently coming in at 13,000 backers, $2.2 million raised, and of course, without a question, without a doubt, tomorrow they'll drop some sort of all-in pledge because that's what they typically do. Sadly, I can't wait till tomorrow to film this because I'm heading off to Gamma, which means I have to film this tonight and then go to sleep for two hours and then get on a flight the next morning. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. I'm going to... Genuinely, I'm going to sleep for two hours after this, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and dive into Zombicide White Death, Kaman's most recent addition to the Zombicide universe, continuing the Black Plague universe, uh, the Black Plague, Green Horde, and now we have White Death. Although I'm sure this is underperforming what they hoped it would fund. I mean, it's still two and a half million dollars by the time all said is done, and we'll possibly get close to three million, although I'm not entirely sure. We'll see what that all-in pledge does. This is going to be a should you back it, going over, to the, over, going over the campaign, the key idea of what's going on, the various pledge levels, uh, the various optional buys, the stretch goals, all of that stuff. And there's a ton of information out there. There's a variety of gameplays you can check out. Uh, you know, you can check out uh, Quacklope's gameplay, Dice Tower's gameplay. Uh, you can check out Chris George from Room and Board did a comparison. He's played the game. He did a comparison between Zombicide White Death and Zombicide Black Plague, telling you the differences between the two games, as well as a five reasons not to back Zombicide White Death in case you're looking for an additional disincentive. Uh, past that, we're going to go ahead and dive into, you know what? Let's go ahead and start off with the campaign. Zombicide White Death continues with the Black Plague universe, although with key changes to the gameplay, uh, taking the core basis of Zombicide, the necromancers, the survivors, all of that, and then adding in a almost tower defense style approach. You're defending your castle, you're trying to ensure you stay alive, and this time round you have allies. You have various characters you can utilize that you have to make sure your own allies don't die. Your own zombies survivors do not die in this game. But then past that, you're going to have a variety of, the, you know, the soldiers on the wall who are going to be there to help you repel the various invaders as they slowly try to break through into the, into the, into the castle while you try to play a bit of a siege defense mode in the game. So the core zombicide system with changes, but while, while maintaining the core gameplay aspects. This is going to be a bit more of a return to... Zombicide Black Plague to Zombicide Green Horde, as opposed to the very, very extensive changes we saw in the Marvel Zombies universe. So if you're looking for more of a more recent edition, we have Marvel Zombies, we have Undead or Alive. Uh, Undead or Alive is still going to be a little bit more similar to Undead or Alive, uh, contrasted with Marvel Zombies, but it's going to maintain all of that. In theory, it's all integratable with, you know, your old Zombicide stuff, although for the most part, it does seem to be focusing on the main gameplay changes, but you could mix and match survivors and whatnot. It has the same system, it has the same tools, and then past that, it's coming to you with uh, the same medieval aspect, but with a bit of an Asian theme uh, Asian theme pasted onto it, not pasted on, uh, 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 on the game. And then I'm actually surprised we haven't seen any crossovers for either Massive Darkness or Rising Sun. We haven't seen any crossover packs. I'd almost expect to see a Rising Sun crossover pack so you can use your giant dragons in Rising Sun in this game. I have actually, I'm sure people have asked for it. I haven't seen a ton of requests for it, but it seems like that would easily make sense for this game, but we have not seen it. And also, they've officially confirmed there is no Game of Thrones, uh, you know, adaptation or anything uh, Game of Thrones related being thrown into the game. But then past that, it's just Zombicide with more of the same. It's more Zombicide, more stuff, more content for a universe you like, with uh, changes to the gameplay such that it might be a version that you want more versus it might be more of the same compared to Black Death. This is a game where if you already have a ton of Zombicide, this may or may not be for you. This is true for any of the Zombicide systems out there. If you have Zombicide White, if you have Black Plague, if you have Green Horde, if you have uh, Invader, if you have any of these Zombicide systems, you have to take a look at what it's doing differently and whether this is a game system for you or not. Although if you don't have those systems, this could well be a great place to jump into it. In general, Zom uh, commands crowdfunding campaigns, their Kickstarters, usually the amount of stuff they give you, the amount of extras, the abominations, the zombies, the survivors, the amount of stuff you get for your $110 pledge, usually their Kickstarter pledges, their base pledges, not the all-in, are usually the best way to go to be able to start off in these systems and see if they're for you. There's going to be a lot of the stuff that has made Zombicide popular in the system. If you're into the theme, if you're into the gameplay, or any of those, this is a good place to start. But with that, let's go ahead and start off with the various optional buys over here, the various pledge levels and the optional buys, because the pledge level is just one over here. We have the $100, $110 pledge level, the Frozen Fortress pledge over here, and that's going to be including everything we see, everything I just scrolled past over here. You get the core game over here, all the components, the Abomination, the Necromancer, uh, the various survivors, and the allies you have this time round, as well as the Lacuna Coil limited edition characters as well. And then past that, we have all of these unlocks. 
All these characters, the survivors that have slowly been unlocked piece by piece. You can go through all the updates, unlocking tons and tons of survivors, and more will be unlocked before this campaign is over, especially once they reveal that all-in pledge, and any possible last remains. Again, I'm surprised at some of the things that have not been included yet. I'm surprised we haven't seen Massive Darkness. I'm surprised we haven't seen Rising Sun. I'm surprised we haven't seen the ability to go ahead and buy any of the original Black Plague or Green Horde. It seems like it's such an easy moneymaker. I'm surprised we haven't seen these things announced or reprinted or all that, but who knows what tomorrow will bring. Past that, we have over here, we have more Abominations as well. So we have Survivors, we have Abominations, we have Daily Unlocks and Reveals, all these things thrown into the game. We have updated promo packs over here. One of the key changes to the gameplay is the idea that as you go through the game, you have your own dedicated Necromancer and Abomination decks, and they're going to give you those mixed in. This is something I've been doing since the original uh, Black Plague, where I have a separate deck I utilize, where I basically whenever I draw an Abomination, I choose to draw from the extra deck to basically have extra Abominations entering the mix, which gives you the ability to balance the game while having the variety of all the Abominations you've unlocked. They're embracing that with a specific Abomination deck, a specific Necromancer deck, so they can go ahead and do that, and they're giving you backwards compatible stuff for your original Abominations from the games, so the various promos, the update pack, all of that over here in this campaign. Then we have the daily unlocks as well, with the various survivors in the daily unlocks, uh, various survivors in the daily unlocks. They're not going as heavily into the various zombies, which I'm very happy to see. That's a personal preference thing where I don't really use all the various, you know, rule changes that they throw in with the daily unlocks and, you know, in the second edition and Undead or Alive. I haven't used those as much, and so I'm happy to see a bit of a return to fewer of those and more survivors and more other things in the daily unlocks. So again, more content, but all of that still mixed into your game engine. That's going to be the core pledge you have over there. Past that, we're going to start leaning into the optional buys, and this is where it's easy to note that you can easily find yourself spending around $350 on just the gameplay content, and then another 50 or so dollars, if not more, on the additional all-in over here. So you're looking at between $350 for around the gameplay content, and around $420 if you want the all-in, although I certainly do have recommendations based on my own personal experience of what I utilize, and let's go ahead and dive into those. Because starting off, we have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles join the fray. This is going to give you Time Crash, where we're bringing in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are joining the Zombicide universe, which, depending on who you are, this is either incredible and you're excited and you're happy, or it's a bit of a thematic disconnect. I find myself in the latter camp, but I'm still going to get this because my kids, Lord knows my kids love the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they happily want this game. Plus, of course, you will be getting the Kickstarter exclusive over here. In general, with the expansions, you want to check what's Kickstarter exclusive and or what comes with extras because this is this is something you can get at retail, although you will not get that miniature. And trust me, on eBay, that single miniature over there is going to be going for the price of the entire game by the time all is said and done. If you want this game, I highly encourage, if you want uh, the, the time crash, I highly encourage getting on the crowdfunding campaign or you're going to be going ahead and paying an extra $50 just to get your hands on that miniature. That's the way these extra miniatures usually end up working. This is going to be bringing you the TMNT to the Zombicide universe with a bit of a, uh, what else to have it have over here? I had a bunch of these, the, the, the tiles with the characters, with the, the ultimate equipment, all these things over here being thrown in. So thematically, and then a bunch of stretch goals as well, lean into the theme of these Teenage, teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as well. Casey Jones over here with his hockey stick in the... It's insane. It's absolutely insane, the various artwork you have over here. But anyways, that's going to be the first expansion, $50. This ultimately is going to be a complete take it or come, well, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say it's a completely a take uh, a take it or leave it kind of a expansion, but for me, I'm, fine, I'm kind of in the middle because I don't actually care about it myself, but my kids are going to want it, so I am kind of getting it despite that. And I'm sure I'll incorporate the stuff. I'm sure I'll utilize all of those in the game. That's going to be for $50 there. Past that, we have the Eternal Empire. This is the first uh, big box uh, expansion that they, they released, $45. And again, it's going to be giving you both the core content over here, which is giving you the various, uh, the, 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 the Chi statues, the Warden Brutes, the Abomination Survivors, a bunch more content from Survivors to Abominations, as well as the uh, campaign, what I believe this is. This gives you the uh, the campaign sheet. Yes, the campaign sheet as well. So you do have the campaign sheet that has been standard in Zombicide since second edition, now, I want to say. They've started including campaign modes in their games. And we also have the Kickstarter exclusive characters. Again, same deal over here. These may not go for as high as a TMNT-related uh, Kickstarter exclusive, but they still will be hard to get. And again, same deal. You can get this and save a little bit of money if you get it at retail later. Or if you want those extras, you're going to want to get this during the campaign. As far as whether you need it or not, they definitely include some gameplay aspects, and definitely if you want the campaign mode, this is something that will be giving you that campaign mode. Personally, I have yet to find myself pulled in by the by the campaigns in Zombicide. I've tried the second edition one, it wasn't for me. I have not tried the Undead or Alive one, I do plan on it because that game is, is brutal enough that I actually want to try the campaign. Uh, but overall, if you want the campaign, this is definitely going to be one that you're going to want. 
Then we have a whole bunch of other expansions over here, starting off with the Crossfire Pack. This is where we move to the smaller packs over here. $35 is going to be giving you Crossbow and Deadbolt Walkers. For me personally, this is a must buy if you're getting this campaign. This gives you zombie variation. And zombie variety to me is one of the best things about the Zombicide system. It's why Black Plague is still on my shelf despite the fact that Under Alive is amazing and Marvel Zombies is amazing. To me, what Black Plague gives me that the others do not is that zombie variety. And while White Death has not come close to matching that, they still are giving you the Crossfire Pack, which is already the start of giving you some zombie variety, and they're not done yet. I want more, Lord knows I want more, but overall this is going to be a start to giving you something else to face in the battlefield, and something else you have to be mindful of as you try to survive in this Winter Wonderland, Winter Wasteland. Then we have Unleash the Divine Beast over here. For $25, you're going to get more Abomination Variety. Now, this is the first one you can easily skip if you don't want to. As much as it's going to give you Zombie Variety, if you are back in this campaign, this campaign is already going to give you a ton of Survivor and, Abom and, and Abomination Variety. So that, yes, this definitely leans into the FOMO. This definitely leans into the, if you want it all, you're going to want this. But overall, this is something you can definitely skip because you're going to have a ton of content as it is. And this is just adding more stuff, which is nice. But if you're trying to save money, if you're trying to get as affordable as possible, you definitely don't need this. Speaking of which, we have the Red Sun Rising. Wool to the Rising Sun over here, giving you again, you know, Survivor uh, survivor, uh, survivor variety as well as a Necromancer thrown into the mix. Again, $25 for a bunch of content that you will have plenty of without needing to get this pack. So more, it's good, sure, but it's not one that you need if you're looking for your own experience and, as as, uh, and trying to save money. Then we have the Wallers of the Middle Kingdom, $25. More situations over here, an Abomination and Necromancer and eight Survivors for $25. A decent amount of content, but definitely stuff you don't need. You're going to have a ton of content. This is more of the same. It's nice, it's not essential. And also, it's worth noting that this is returning to the original Black Plague system where you have these skills coming from a general shared pool of skills as opposed to their own unique skills. At least one of the nice things about Marvel Zombies is that as much content you, as you have, every single survivor was coming to the table with its own unique skill, uh, with your own unique set of skills, so you didn't have this kind of shared skill pool. Versus over here, because you have a shared skill pool, at a certain point in the Black Plague system, in the Zombicide system, at a certain point, your survivors start to feel a little samey once you have a certain number of them, because they're all pulling from the same shared pool. And that's something to keep in mind as you decide whether you do or don't want it all. At least the abominations are all unique, but the survivors, they're coming from a shared pool with some degree of, of uniqueness to them. The definite combination is going to be unique, but on its own, you have to factor that in. We have Way of the Warrior over here, which is not loading. Let's refresh this page over here and see what we got. We have Way of the Warrior. This is over here, more of the same. We have seven survivors, a bunch of equipment, no abominations, no whatever. This is, I believe, bringing you the basic, the principle of the seven samurai. If you've watched that movie, great movie, by the way. But this is thematically pulling that in. Uh, seven samurai survivors, all honorable and brave, and all about to die a slow death eventually. They're all going to die. They're all going to die, unfortunately. This is not the pack you want to go into your game with because they are all going to die. Also, see what I said before about all the variety you do and don't need. Then we have, again, these pages. The page, I think the I think the, the, the crowdfunding campaign did not want me to load too many pages all at once, so we're going to load these all now and come back to them. But we have the Celestial Knights. So again, we have more. Five survivors, uh, a bunch of ID cards, a bunch of equipment, skill reference, no equipment. I don't know why I said that. But yeah, more, more content for this, uh, the more survivors for the game. See everything I said about the previous packs. And then we have up close and personal with the Berserker Walkers. This is going to give you a walker and zombie variety. Going back to what I said already, if you're looking for more zombie variety, these are going to give you walkers that you have to take out by actually being in their space with a melee weapon, as opposed to from range. This is going to give you zombie variety, which you are not otherwise getting enough of in the core set. So I am a huge fan of Ganon. The Berserker Walkers. Then we have the, the 3D Battlements and Extra Tiles. This is going to be giving you two new expansions. The, none of them is none of them gameplay related. We have $32 for the Battlements of the game that are going to give you more of a 3D aspect to your gameplay as you put them down and, uh, and as you remove them as the zombies slowly break the way into the castle. This is a hundred percent not necessary but definitely very cool and is going to enhance the visual aesthetic of the table. It's not a gameplay change. You have to decide if you care enough about it, but it's definitely something that is nice to have as far as just, I mean, it's one of the things I'm surprised that Undead or Alive, to this day, I'm surprised they never had a, a plastic train. One of the things that the Undead or Alive has is a train that slowly rolls into town, and I'm surprised they didn't say, take the opportunity to say, hey, you know what, here's a $40 train you can go ahead and add to your game, and over here, they now have that with the walls. It's something I'm sure a lot of people will be getting, it's something I'm going to be getting, but it certainly does not, certainly not need it from a gameplay stance. 
And then we have over here, this next one, which is not loading. I think this is actually the same one. This is the, these are the extra tiles over here, if we go through it. So the extra tiles over here, this is gonna be the extra tile pack for $20, giving you more of the tiles. These are not new tiles, these are the same tiles, but giving you more of them. So this is giving you the White Death and Eternal Empire tiles, doubling up so you can create your own stuff. Speaking for myself, I have never used extra tiles in the Zombicide world. I've always like, I, I mean, I've gotten them in the past with some of the systems, but I've never ended up using them. And I just imagine that for most people, this is something you don't need. It's also giving you more tokens, more tiles, so I don't think you need this, but if you are the kind of person who's going to build your own scenarios, sure, it's nice to have. I think most people are not going to benefit or use this. And then lastly, we have the dice for $10 and $10. And lastly, as of right now, I'm sure tomorrow, additional add-ons, possibly crossover packs, possibly new stuff, possibly the ability to get the old stuff. Although at this point, I think if they would have, if they would have had that, I think they would have had it by now for the old content. And then we have the Jade dice. We have the frost dice. These are always nice to have things. Personally, I've always been tough. I've always been harder with the uh, Zombicide dice because I don't like the uh, zombie and torch faces of their dice. So I've never really gotten the Deluxified. Usually when it comes to the Deluxe, the Deluxified command dice, I like to get them. To this day, Cthulhu the Death, Death May Die. I, I don't like using the regular dice because of how nice the uh, marbleized dice are. In this case, I think I'm probably going to skip with them. I think I'm going to go with regular dice and call it a day because I've never liked the torches or the zombie faces on these dice. But that's uh, $10 for each of those dice sets if you want to add those to your gameplay. Which makes a bit, a bit of a summary. So, where are we, th where are we with these add-ons? What do I recommend? Everything I recommend here is from the bias of my own experience of what I personally go for and what I personally go with. Now I am, just to be very clear, I will be going all in on this one because I usually do. All in, less the tiles and less the dice. I don't need those. Everything else, I'm probably going to go ahead and get my hands on it because if I like the system, I'm going to want it all. And if I don't like the system, everything here will hold its value just fine. That's always the backdrop of these uh, come on conversations, which is their stuff does hold its value. If this isn't for me, I will happily turn around and sell it and say, you know what, White Death, you've been good, but you aren't the uh, change to the gameplay system that I wanted, and I don't, I don't care enough. And yes, I have way too much Zombicide as it is, but I'm almost certainly always going to get whatever Command puts out as far as Zombicide stuff, and then just sell the ones that don't work for me. I got rid of Invader. I got rid of Second Edition. I will happily get rid of this if it doesn't make enough changes to enhance my gameplay experience to justify holding on to it. But in the meantime, I will be getting it all. Now that said, if you are looking for a budget recommendation that I think will give you a great Zombicide experience at a semi-reasonable price point. I say semi because I'm about to recommend a $200 purchase so that you can not spend $400, but it is what it is. Obviously the starting pledge of $110 for the base set. I think you can skip on TMNT. Obviously, if you are a huge fan, you're going to ignore me anyways and get it. But if you aren't a huge fan, I'd recommend skipping on it to begin with. Uh, skip on Eternal Empire as well. The campaign modes generally have not gotten enough buzz or hype as far as them. Some people use them, but for most people, I think it's overkill for what you need. And yes, you could pick it up in retail if you do find yourself loving the system. The Crossfire Pack to me is going to enhance your gameplay experience a lot. Although we can skip almost everything else that gives you extra content because your $110 pledge is going to give you enough there. The Berserker World walkers for $20 are going to again add to your experience and at that point I think the balance as well if you can skip this one go ahead and skip it but if you are looking for something that will enhance the visual gameplay experience on the table for 30 bucks you're going to get a decent amount of just immer immersion and and feeling of being in a battlefield that I think is worthwhile unless of course you have your own wall set that you plan on using instead and these obviously will be fitting to the tiles so the sections so that will work in that sense. Altogether, you're looking at around $200 if you get those things. Again, the base game, the Crossfire Pack, the Berserker Walkers, and the Three Developments, you're going to be getting a ton of Abomination variety, a ton of Survivor variety, a ton of gameplay content, as well as some deluxifications. And yes, it will run you around $200, but that's still half the price of what you can otherwise spend over here. And even then, again, if you can skip the Battlements, go ahead and skip those as well. That's going to be my overall recommendation for what to get from this pledge over here, to get what to get from Zombicide White Death. There's an absolute ton of content you can get your hands on. There's survivors, there's guards, there's abominations, there's, there's, there's necromancers, there's tons and tons of stuff for this gameplay system. And if you're not totally sold, rest assured, Kaman is going to have another Zombicide for you next year, the year after. I don't know, but they will always have Zombicide content. As long as people keep spending money on it, they will keep putting it out. Yes, there's a ton of stretch goals. Yes, if the theme pulls you in. And by the way, I've given them a lot of flack for the theme, but for me it's not, and I've said this before in other videos, but... To me, I think that there was a thematic disconnect as far as what they kind of originally pitched and then how it kind of manifested as you started going through the campaign. There was a bit of a disconnect as far as what it seemed Zombicide White Death was going to be, especially as it was named the successor of Black Plague. And of course, the medieval times could exist anywhere, but Black Plague and Green Horde has a certain feel to it that I think White Death does not. And so thematically, this game, this campaign has thrown me off extensively, especially once you combine the TMNT with that as well. 
That said, though, I like the sculpts. I like the art. I like the characters. I like the gameplay changes. Or I should rephrase that. I think I like the game the gameplay changes. This is the first homicide in a while that I've not had a chance to play it. Uh, you know, before the campaign goes. But there's a lot here to pull you in. Ultimately, you have to decide whether you care or don't care. A lot of people are backing this campaign. We have what is it, thirteen thousand people? Thirteen thousand people backing this campaign. Two and a half million dollars will be raised easily, possibly getting close to three million. And a lot of it will come down to all the things come on drops tomorrow. Almost certainly before this video goes up because they love to do that to me. This was filmed Saturday night for the record, so um, anything that, that you say, hey, this is so showing up, whatever it is, you know, this is going to go up later Sunday afternoon, so things will be missed. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. I'll be in the comments. And then, well, I'd say, of course, there's two back or not to back, but honestly, I'm about to film that as well, so uh, it is what it is. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. This is Zombicide White Death. There's a lot you can skip here, and if you don't feel the need for it, go ahead and pass on it. I personally recommend Undead or Alive as being one of my favorite Zombicide systems. I recommend Marvel Zombies as being one of my favorite Zombicide systems. And White Death may turn into one of my favorite Zombicide systems, but I'm not there yet. And Zombicide for me has had many, many campaigns that have been amazing and incredible and I've adored, and then many that were not necessarily for me. I came close to not backing this came campaign. I came fairly close. Ultimately, it's still Zombicide, and I love Zombicide. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And as always, I hope you have a good one.